everybody, and welcome back to the National News Network. Today, we before show our special presentation of our civil rights documentary, I'll give us a brief insight of how it all began. The civil rights movement from the 1950s to 1960s was caused by the Civil War. The Civil War is war between Northern America and Southern America to release and abolish slavery. Shortly after the war, though, African Americans were no longer classified as slaves, but still racially discriminated by the people, the whites. And, to make it even harder, the Jim Crow laws enforcing separate but equal, where the whites and blacks were separated, made it even worse for the African Americans. But soon enough, heroes rose from the ashes for freedom and justice. That's all for me, and now for a special presentation. The Civil Rights Movement The Cause The Civil Rights Movement began after the Civil War. The Civil War was a war between Northern American states and Southern American states. The war was on freeing the slaves and abolishing slavery. After four bloody years, it came to an end in 1865, leaving behind 620,000 dead soldiers in a weak South. Though African Americans were free, they were still scorned and looked down upon by the whites, and Jim Crow laws from the 1880s to 1960s proposed legal punishment on those of different race. This included segregated schools, buses, even water fountains. Also, states set laws that forbid and restricted African Americans of their rights. For example, in Wyoming, quote, All marriages of white persons with Negroes, Malados, Mongolians, or Malaya hereafter contracting the state of Wyoming are and shall be illegal and void. These are just some of the ridiculous laws set to keep away freedom and equality just because of a difference in race. The Economy during the Civil Rights Movement, America along three other countries were on the gold standard. The gold standard was basically currency in gold. It was a system defying monetary units in terms of their value in gold, usually accompanied by the free circulation of gold and free exchange of currency into it. In other words, a system to fix prices of countries' domestic currency in terms of the amount of gold. The story of why America got off the gold standard starts in England. When the Great Depression hit England in 1931, England was a mess, people were getting paranoid along with the government. People began trading in their money for gold quickly, depleting the amount of Britain's gold. Montag Norman, the head of Bank of England, faced a dilemma. Either to leave the gold standard or run out of gold. After long thinking, he left. This set off a chain reaction. Country after country began to flee the gold standard. Franklin D. Roosevelt was next. His economic advisor told him to stay on the gold standard. Like how England thought it would help keep everything together. One advisor told him to leave it and after hard deliberation, Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to leave. Some thought this was a terrible mistake, but in actuality, economics believe the reason America got out of the Great Depression was by leaving the gold standard. Political Campaigns and Elections Because the span of the Civil Rights Movement was so long, there were quite a few elections. Though the main election that took place during this time period was John F. Kennedy versus Richard Nixon. This 1960 election was one of the most famous elections ever. The election took place on Tuesday, the 8th of November. It was the 44th election. Leading up to election night, John F. Kennedy had won his nominations on the first ballot and had impressive victories over Hubert Humphrey. John F. Kennedy was a Democratic representative. His platform was mainly on an idealistic new frontier. He believed by showing the world what a good Democratic run of country looked like, it would defeat communism in other parts of the world. Richard Nixon, the Republican representative had a platform similar to his opponent, JFK, but his main goal was to draw close to the Vietnam War. In the end, though, Nixon won the popular vote, but he lost with 219 electoral votes. The winner of the 1968 election and the 44th president was John F. Kennedy. In the election of 1860, Abraham Lincoln said the question was whether this nation could exist half slave or half free. In the election of 1960, and with the world around us, the question is whether the world will exist, half slave or half free, whether it will move in the direction of freedom, in the direction of the road that we are taking, or whether it will move in the direction of slavery. I think it will depend in great measure upon what we do here in the United States. The Government The Civil Rights Act is one of John F. Kennedy's greatest achievements. The Civil Rights Act was an act that prohibited any racial discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It was a stepping stone and benchmark act for the Civil Rights Movement. The act also ended the Jim Crow laws. Over time, the act would be strengthened 
to cover more civil rights laws. John F. Kennedy created the law in the summer of 1963. The House Judiciary Committee approved it on October 26, 1963, and on November 1963, the 20th, it was sent to the full House, two days before John F. Kennedy was shot. After John F. Kennedy's assassination, the act still kept on going. The final act was passed on February 10, 1964. Though the act was held for African Americans as the first time changed, it did not end the movement. Whites still found ways to bend the rules. For example, African Americans who live in the worst of neighborhoods and attend the worst of schools. But the act did lead the way to the Voting Rights Act in 1965. The Jim Crow laws that were stopped by the act all started with one landmark Supreme Court case. The case was Plessy v. Ferguson, when Homer Plessy, an African American, sued a railroad company in 1892 for arguing that segregated seating was a violation of his 14th Amendment. In 1896, when the case reached the Supreme Court, the court ruled against Plessy, saying separate but equal facilities did not violate the 14th Amendment. But throughout the movement, many heroes arrived, all fighting for equality. The most famous hero from the Civil Rights Movement with countries with his words, Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. avidly used his First Amendment rights when he gathered crowds and rallied for equality. People come all over the nation to hear him speak, and his famous speeches that rocked America that we still quote today. For example, the I Have a Dream speech. The Negro still is not free. One hundred years later, the, the life of the Negro... Geography During the Civil Rights Movement, there was also a war, the Vietnam War. Though the Vietnam War was not directly in the country, it affected us greatly. The Vietnam War was the war between Vietnam and France. The American people didn't want anything to do with the war. They thought the idea of it was stupid, but no matter how much they ignored it, it crashed the US economy, costing America $167 billion. Not only did it affect us money-wise, but those who have family members in the war left emotional scars, and people began to lash out. Some turned rebellious and started rallies. Some of the youth joined counterculture. The counterculture stood against everything in the middle class values practiced. This included riots, long hair, rock and roll, drugs, and etc. The Effect The main effect of the Civil Rights Movement was that it ended racial discrimination in society by abolishing separate but equal and the Jim Crow laws, making African Americans and whites allowed to come together, not separating them by law. But though many years have passed, there's still some racial discrimination all around the world today. But the Civil Rights Movement truly shows dedication in fighting for what's right.